one of the highest sources of natural creatine you can find in the world is red meat. In fact, this is probably why athletes of the past, bodybuilders at the turn of the century, the Bronze Era athletes, why they found so many strength gains when they ate primarily red meat. It's very high in creatine. It's also one of the most nutrient-dense foods you can find on the planet. Yeah. What do, you, do you know what the um, how many ounces of red meat is equivalent 2. to? 2.2 grams of creatine per pound of red meat. 2.2 per pound. Yeah. Of, so of five meat. five grams of creatine per kilo of red meat, and you'll get five grams. Huh. So I mean, you figure a guy like like me or you who's probably eating easily a, a pound and a half to two pounds of meat is almost getting it through. Yeah, through food. So, the, <clears throat> so do you do? I mean, you are pretty consistent with your creatine, no matter what. You probably yeah. there, there's so there's data now that shows that there's probably benefit, probably. So it's not conclusive, but probably benefit to taking to getting ten grams of creatine a day. Cognitive benefits. And there's no comparable compound from plants, right? Your your body can make its own creatine, uh, and it makes it from. Uh, I forgot the amino acids. Maybe Dougie could look up amino acids uh, that make up creatine. The problem is, is that your capacity to to utilize creatine or or or, or store it mm -hmm. is much higher than what you tend to convert, and much higher than what you tend to consume. So, creatine is naturally occurring in um, animal products, in muscle. Muscle's high in creatine, right? So, you eat animal muscle, and you're going to get you're going to get creatine. Um, but your capa your your capacity to store creatine is higher than what we tend to consume. Right. <clears throat> the amino acids are methionine, glycine, and arginine. And then there's two enzymes uh, that are are yeah. And uh, red used. red meat is definitely your best option in terms of the most. This is why again, this is back in the day. It's the only place, right? You're not you can't get you can't get creatine from uh, white meat, can yeah, you? you can. Yeah, oh, you chicken, can. All animal sources, less. Oh, all and animal, muscle. Oh, oh, it does. Yeah. So oh. fish, pork, chicken. You know, it just takes lamb. way more of it in order to get. Um, it's less. I don't know how much less, but it's not as much. I know red meat is the highest has got one of the highest uh, sources. Um, but again, I mean, this is <clears throat> bodybuilders in the fifties and sixties, forties and before they would, they would talk about how, like, if you really want to get strong, make sure you eat a lot of red meat. And so yeah. for, in bodybuilding circles, red meat has always been known as like this strength muscle building type food. And then later what happened is people were like, well, there's nothing special about red meat. You get protein and chicken because people didn't understand creatine. Yeah. But then when we started learning about the benefits of taking creatine as a supplement, we look back and we go, oh, it was, was probably, a contributing factor for sure. Definitely, yeah. definitely. So, okay, in regards to creatine then, does it matter if it's grass-fed or not? Wow, great question. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to make a speculation. Maybe we can look this up. Grass-fed beef tends to be leaner per pound. So a pound of uh, you know ribeye or tri-tip that's grass fed is going to be leaner among other things. It's also has a little bit of a different fatty acid profile, which is beneficial. And it's got higher levels of other nutrients that are, that are better for grass fed meat in general is just a little bit better for you. Right. But the fact that it's leaner per pound, I would assume since creatine is stored in muscle, that it would be higher in creatine per pound. Interesting. And you I don't can, know how much higher. Or and how much if of a you difference. were going based off a of calorie, say I'm allotted this many calories for this meat, you're going to be able to eat more of a leaner cut too. So yes. From yes, that perspective. Yes. So I, I would imagine that, but I don't know if, if there's more creatine per pound of lean tissue in grass fed versus, um, you know, conventional. Although I would say I'll make another speculation. And again, I don't think this is a huge difference if it's true. <clears throat> but and this is a speculation again, but grass fed animals tend to have more freedom. They tend to move and roam more. They're happier. And, <laughs> Happy cows. I don't, I don't know. That's that commercial, right? For, <laughs> yeah. I, so their muscle might be healthier. Definitely not as sickly. Right. As some of these that are just like confined in their space. And then, I mean, that's really where like the antibiotics and all that played a factor was because they're just like so you confined, had to. right? Yeah. You had to. But yeah, like like the marbling that people like, mm -hmm. there's less of that in grass-fed meat. So they just don't have as much body fat. So I would assume it's got more, more creatine <clears throat> Did as you well. find anything, Doug? What do you got? Well, this is interesting. Herring actually has the highest. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah, second is beef. Yeah, beef and then pork and then chicken. Mm. So chicken has half the creatine per gram that beef does. So, so let me just paint the picture. Imagine if you're a bodybuilder and you're eating, or somebody who wants to build muscle, and you're eating 150 grams of protein a day from chicken. 
And then you go to 150 grams of protein a day from beef, even if you control the macros, even right. if you eat the same. Get yeah. double leanest, the creatine. Double the creatine. Yeah. Right. And so this is why people have noticed, wow, I feel so much stronger. And they used to think, oh, maybe it's the B12, maybe it's the iron. That's crazy because they're it's like, creatine. I know those tilapia and that for a while, all you saw was like tilapia and asparagus was yeah. like the bodybuilder. That's yeah. still standard, yeah. really. That's the cut. Yeah. That's okay. the cut. Uh, yeah. Yeah. On the cut. But you know, body, by, by, that, by that point, when the tilapia craze happened, creatine was a staple. Like if you're a bodybuilder, you're supplementing you know, anyway. Yeah, first yeah. of all, I mean, pretty much everybody will benefit from supplementing with creatine, regardless of what your goal is. Yeah. But if you're a bodybuilder, you're not taking creatine. Like I don't know, like what are you doing? Well, <laughs> you can take a lot of if you're, if you're taking, <laughs> maybe you don't you're, care. Yeah, yeah. If you're taking, you didn't take trend. <laughs> yeah, if you're taking trend and test and deca, train, train yeah, team. yeah, Winnie and everything. I was like, sure, throw some creatine in there. You too. took D ball monohydrate. <laughs> <laughs> Sprinkle some of this on there. Yeah. That's, That's I actually used to think that was funny. I used to think funny. They got my peers that like you know they're spend how money on yeah their there. anabolic stack is like crazy and it's like oh you're throwing some branch chain amino acids in there huh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's really making it good. Difference. Yeah, good thing you're taking that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, wow, what are all those it's pills? Probably, it's probably not that trimbalone at yeah, all. This is yeah. anadrol two you know five fifty. <laughs> yeah. This is D ball. And this is uh, leucine, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. but yeah, I think, you know, yeah, generally speaking, gram per gram, you're going to get better. I mean, overall, right. Fatty acid profile on, on uh, grass fed meats better. And it, it's, it's not a huge difference, but it's enough to where if you eat enough, if you eat a lot of red meat, like I do, it makes a difference. You know, I mean, I eat so much red meat that I, I want it to be grass fed. Almost, pri almost all of the red meat I eat. I, I don't want to say almost all. Yes. A majority. At least eighty percent of the red meat yeah. I eat is from butcher box. At least eighty percent, if Same. not more. Yeah, I'm probably about that. Everything I'm cooking from home is. Oh, I shouldn't say everything because there's times I'll go over to the butcher and go get something really nice that's not uh, grass fed beef. That's when you want the fatty marbled. Yeah, but you know what though? You can only have so much of that. I when I found when I moved to the new place and I have like this like super high end butcher right around the corner. I got on this kick for a while where I was like A5 Wagyu all the time. And it was like after about three times in a row in a short period of time, I was like, ah, it's too it's too rich. It's, it's too much. It's yeah. like a nice treat to do it occasionally. To eat it on a regular basis, it's too rich. That's yeah. why that's it's almost like um, creamy. Like, like yeah. the ones that we've had are so. Yeah, no, it's it's so much. It's, it's like I, buttery. I, I was explaining to Katrina, it's like because she's always asking, like a lot of times I'll cook the meat and then creamy she'll- Creamy is such a gross word. I know. She'll, she'll <laughs> pair with it. And I, and I tell yeah. her, I'm like, when I make this Maybe type of quiver. a cut uh, of meat, um, I we I don't want a, a fatty uh, side at all. It needs to be like really a, like a really light side with it because that, there's so much fat in that. that like You know what's of, like that for me is a uh, bone marrow. If you eat, because bone marrow is real, obviously it's like pure fat, so rich and so delicious. But after like <laughs> just a little bit, I have to have a little bit and then I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. It's like, a, it's a nice, Too much. it's a nice treat every yeah. now and then, but to get on, like to do it all the time. It's like, have it's you ever eaten foie, foie gras? Have you guys ever eaten that? Uh-uh. Uh-huh. You know, you've had that, right? Oh, you know what that is? Uh-uh. Oh, that's terrible. What, what is it? Not that you don't know what it is, but it's a terrible food. What? It's fatty geese liver, goose liver. I believe it's goose, yeah. Goose, goose liver. Or duck. Yeah. yeah. Not sure. Or duck liver. So mm. they, they take a duck. I don't know if it's a duck or a goose. And yeah, they, the way they get it, it's like they force feed yeah. the hell out of it until their liver gets diseased. And then that's the that's what they serve. <laughs> yeah. A lot of restaurants have banned it. Huge. Yeah. Because uh, of that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's like not it's not it's yeah, it's not cool how they make it. Are you gonna show a picture of Doug and make it feel terrible? <laughs> no, I'm just looking it up. We'll watch the video. Yeah. But it's like a super rich um you know, they add it to, to steak at, you know, really nice steakhouse. Yeah, I was at some crazy fancy restaurant that did that. Yeah. Mm. So, but, surprised you never had it. No, yeah. No, I don't think, I mean, I don't know if I'd ever, yeah, I'll have some duck liver. Yeah. There was a place where I used to live a long time ago that was called Mallard's that was a, like, specialized in mm. all duck stuff. And I think they had it there, but I don't think I remember ever having There's it. There's a restaurant that Doug's been referring me to that serves uh, lots of organ meats. They're like organ meat, like skewers Where? and stuff. I haven't gone there. Oh, yeah. It's called Japanese Gaku. Restaurant. It's a Japanese res restaurant, uh, mm. yakitori restaurant. What does yakitori mean? It's uh, tori is like chicken, and okay. then yaki is like to cook it on a fire. Okay. And so they do it over a special, really hot charcoal. And it's, uh, I mean, they have liver, they have heart, they have mm. gizzard, they have, of course, thighs and everything else. Fantastic. I'm excited to go eat at mm. Nobu this week because it's so funny. Right after we booked that trip to go to there, I've seen so many people uh, sharing. There's one in Palo Alto. There's one down in uh, San Diego, I think, all over the place. Some Everybody's of the some of the craziest strength gains I ever saw as a kid was when I ate uh, chicken liver on a regular basis. Crazy strength yeah, gains. Really? But it's high in cholesterol. 
super high in cholesterol. And that's when I started to piece together that, that was it yeah. from yeah. cholesterol that or from your experimenting age? that. Cause I know, I know that's you, when I, that's when I first figured it out mm. is I, I started eat cause I, I know that bodybuilders took desiccated liver tablets back in the day. Yeah. And then drank cream and everything too. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I, I bought, so I had my mom buy chicken liver, which by the way, half the time they'll give it to you for free because they're throwing it away. Uh -huh. And I had her fry it up on a pan and I just, you know, ate it because I was stupid. You know, I was a kid. I didn't care. I just eat whatever. And I got really strong hmm. off of it. Short and period the, of time. The hack on that is to grind it up, put it with your hamburger yeah. and cook it together. That's right. Yeah. And you don't even know. We did that with beef it. liver and it wasn't that good. Though. I don't like beef liver. Nah, you can do chicken liver. Chicken liver is much, yeah. Mm. Yeah, much better. Anyway. <laughs> Today's giveaway is MAPS Performance. To win that, to enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, the sale programs for the month. The program's on sale. Ready? MAPS Anabolic, half off. MAPS Anabolic Advanced, also half off. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I got an interesting statistic for you. Sure. Justin will like this one. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I read things and I'm like, Justin. Sometimes Justin. I read things and I'm like, it's rarely for me. Adam. No, I did the car <laughs> one with you the other day. I had a few you, for you. The Rolls the Royce one. Yeah, yeah, one for every 10, I think. That's so. true. <laughs> I feel like, so I was like, may as well you two have a conversation. Yeah. All right. Hey. So check this out. So the inventor of the automatic machine gun, Hiram Maxim. So he invented the machine gun. By the way, do you guys know when the machine gun was invented, they thought that that would be the end of the world? Do you guys know that? Really? Wow. World War I happened. And because before that, warfare was like charge, you know, you yeah, charge yeah, against yeah, me, yeah. Or charge, load the gun. And all of a sudden, like they were just nets. mowing people down. And there were people who thought this is this is the this invention will end unfair, the world. unfair advantage. It'll just end the world is what yeah. they thought. Little did they know we'd make an atomic How bomb. How accurate is <laughs> the <laughs> last samurai with that depiction? Yeah. 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 They showed that. Um, yeah, I don't remember that part. You don't remember that part no, where they, they charge, yeah, they get mowed like down, like a Gatling gun. They, yeah, it's basically a Gatling gun. They they showed and they're just mowing down everybody. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that guy became deaf right from test firing his gun. His son is the guy who invented the silencer. What? Yeah, wow. isn't that's that so, weird? That's so. Weird. So he invents the machine gun, and his dad goes deaf, and he's like, "We need to do something about this." And his son invents the silencer. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Like, I don't want to go out like that. Yeah. Yeah. Family business. Get ahead of this. Yeah. Last week, speaking of that, silencers, this guy over here, uh, we go, he's like. Doug doesn't want to tell anybody. Yeah, just, he's making a face it. right I'm now. I'm going to tell everybody right now. Adam uh, can't keep a secret for the just, life of him. I'm like, no, bro, no. Hey, you, no, you got something you want to tell me or what? <laughs> I like to keep my business He takes you down to the gun store to go pick some guns up, and he's like, yeah, my silencer's in. You know what I'm saying? You're my silencer for my That's such a weird My AR-15, my freaking. Yeah, we got John Wick over here. Yeah, he is like John John Wick, dude. I'm like, what are you? Yeah, what's awesome. the, so why is this? Because you think it'd be cool to hear it? I just think it'd be fun. Yeah. And plus, it's they're loud, right? Guns are loud. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we wear ear protection. I get it. I yeah. get it. It's just cool, okay? Cool. It's cool. Because yeah. he, wants to, he wants to change the crime scene when someone breaks in his house. Yeah. Psst, psst, psst. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, crap. He didn't have a weapon on him. <laughs> you do now. Here's a knife. <laughs> all right, all right. Sprinkle a little drugs on him. You're getting me in trouble here. <laughs> Sprinkle some crack on him. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know, that was the... How funny is this? I didn't see that coming. That was the... This the single most liked video I've ever posted. Which it, one? It, it surpassed abs pictures and it surpassed uh, food pictures. What of you in my stories? The guns. Wow. Really? I, people were really people excited were to see excited me get guns. It. Wow. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Mm. You got uh, a bunch of shotguns. I did. I did get a bunch of shotguns. Just, just a bunch of shotguns. Well, home protection mainly, and then also some for sport for shooting clay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I really enjoy shooting clay. Katrina enjoyed doing oh, that, I so that. I, I want her and I to be able to kind of do that. And then of course us, if I can ever get all of us planned to go do something like that. Um, and then and then that's home protection. Like that's, I want something easy. Like that's in in a moment like that. I think that's the thing that a lot of people. I know. Uh, I know you're more of a revolver handgun person, but it's like. I don't know in a situation like that that's really scary and and you're in, and if you ever shot a pistol like it takes some practice to shoot a pistol straight and well. Not just that, but the panic of the anxiety of all yeah. oh, the safety and right. what you, so you got to like, really practice often. Yeah. To, I mean, to so, make sure. So I, I she's I got her a shotgun. So you want, you a, want to be like with the yeah, with the freaking <laughs> so grab it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, that honestly they say they yes. say that Is that they, true now? So I've heard, so I've heard that. Our our cop friend said that well, he's told That's her, what I heard that, yeah. that oftentimes racking the gun is enough it's enough to hear yeah the noise yeah. now now here's here's the thing is I mean, that true or is that one of those like things that urban, urban yeah like like the shotgun 
you know, PR company. Well, okay. Out, well, here's whatever. here's an easy way. To Makes sense. Here's an easy way to probably figure that out. How many home intruders do you think are like someone who's robbing a house? Yeah. How often do you think they're even armed? Right, I bet. I bet ha more than half. Well, the vast well, majority don't want anything. And also, home. who that's wants what, resistance? So that's what I'm saying. So yeah. I, I would. So if we could first figure out in 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 a uh, home robbery situation or home break in, okay, how often are those people armed? If it's less than if less than half the time they're armed, unarmed, then imagine how scared they are when they walk yeah, in and yeah. they hear somebody, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying, yeah. and they don't got nothing. So I, I know. So my ex father in law, somebody broke into his house, okay, in the middle of the night, which is not. It's, it's actually more often they break into the day. Yeah. yeah, someone broke in when he was home. He runs out out of his room, and as he comes out, he yells, "I have a gun." He didn't have a gun, but he yells it, and the guy ran away just from him saying that. Right. Yeah. So, so I, you know, I, I just said that's what I'm like. My thought was this: like, so it was like, of course, I'm thinking of a, the worst case scenario. I'm not home. Katrina yeah. and Max, they're upstairs. And she hears the alarm go off, or yeah. someone is in the house, and her being able to grab a shotgun that's got a freaking laser on it, coming around from out <laughs> upstairs, and just imagine a red dot flying all over <laughs> the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, hearing a cuckoo. Like, I'm hoping that oh. is, that's enough. She ain't gonna kill nobody. Or you're you know quiet. Saying? The dude's going through your stuff. Yeah. There's a red dot. Turn on the set. van on. Turn <laughs> the van on. <laughs> your friends all brother. Here, there's dude. a red dot on yeah. here. For it. Oh yeah. shit. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. I so this is where my head goes with stuff like that. I don't necessarily think about somebody breaking into my house. Okay. I just don't feel that's just not something I think about when I'm home. Like that's going to happen. I think more like this. Like I need a gun if there's a natural disaster or we lose power for two weeks or something happens. <laughs> like apocalypse yeah, stuff. Like, well, Mad not just Max like, is like, like, way, yeah. he's like, I don't think it's something everybody's that's driving more likely. Diesel like, trucks. Like, I know out. it's more like, I think more of something apocalyptic. That's going <laughs> to <happen. laughs> say like in the movies, like, <laughs> Like vampires yeah, like or neighbors yes. got all this food. Well, no, I'm just so, like hungry. Have you guys ever heard of the blackout in the 1970s in New York yeah, City? Have I you did. heard of this? I did hear about How that. long was the power out? It was only it was a, a few days, wasn't yeah, it? Was, Bro, so it went crazy. The crime maybe went a week. Crazy. So yeah, I didn't know about nuts. that until we had that rolling blackout that happened in California not that long ago, a couple of years ago, where it was taking a while to come back on. And people and I didn't I didn't even think of this. <laughs> But how long? It's only twenty five hours. So twenty five okay, hours. So listen. There was like so, so listen. I remember, crime. So I didn't know about that until we had those rolling blackouts in California, yeah. and because it was already hours that we didn't have it, people were freaking out because they said, "Hey, man, if you if it's pitch black for more than a day or two, people will start to fucking yes. freak out." I'm like, yes, that's weird. So yeah, that's but I what mean, I. That's why I don't go to cities. You know, I'm not a city guy. I yeah. guarantee that's a, one of the bigger problems because they already have a lot of crime. yeah. That ain't happening out in your guys' place. No power goes out every get week. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Power goes out all the time out there. It's like, oh, all I got to do, all I got to do is, is get out of banjo. Yeah. Ding, 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 yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, They're going to run. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's where my head goes. Like if, if something like, like, like there's a power grid <laughs> failure or something like that. Then I think Doug's the same way too because he's got the zombie apocalypse. That's what I'm that's, I feel like. That's why he has ARs and silencers here. They're killing zombies, yeah. dude. Hey guys, listen. <laughs> I know, you know, we just ran out of water. Uh, Don't worry. I'll be right back. I, I literally, <laughs> I just want my wife for like safe. Like yeah. that's how, like, I think she's got to go to the range with you often, dude. She's you need her to it. feel as comfortable as possible. She's with into her. it. I mean, okay, she already good. likes to shoot. So good. she was like, that when I told her I was getting she's like, oh, I can't wait to shoot. So she's like, we had a really good time the first time that we went and did the clay shooting. And so, that's part of why I wanted to finally go get this done is so we could actually What's go crazy there. to me is that there's insurance for people. You you talked about this. We you can it. get insurance. This insurance, if you have to use your gun in self-defense, a lawyer will represent you. But here's the crazy part. They'll also clean up the mess. They'll send somebody to clean up your yeah. house and shit. It was wow. actually when Doug Which and I, I didn't think you about. have like a guy. When, yeah. Well, when I Doug, and, think I, about when Doug and I were learning about it, I actually was like, I mean, we both got you. You bought it too, didn't mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we both paid for it because I was like, wow, I guess this is. You don't think about that. No, stuff. like imagine you. Keep, oh, honey, I saved you, and then oh shit, there's yeah. brains and stuff. Well, yeah, and not and not to mention, heaven forbid, in California. Someone's in your house, and if they weren't armed and they got shot or something like that, like I'm, yeah. you're potentially going to go to jail. So I mean, it covers they try bail. to sue you first, like yes. trying to break into your yes. house. So like, uh, that was insane. that was I. They got me for sure. I paid for both Katrina and I both to have that because I was like, obviously, the reason why I'm doing that is just for protection. And if some scary thing like that happened, yeah. and another thing that the guy when he was telling me that I just again didn't think about. How you communicate to the police officer on how it happened, the words you use are such a big deal. Really? Yes. Like what? Like you need to you need to have expressed you were afraid for your life 
Oh, and, so don't act like a tough and, guy? Well, <laughs> well, yeah. Like, you can't Tom be like, like nah, that's all good. I he broke it. into my I house and I shot him. I like, saw you him, could, so like, I blasted like, him. Even though that, that happened, you, and, but the way you say it and communicate can make all the world of a difference in your defense. Of course. I know. I, I, I would have never thought that. I, and who would in the heat of the moment? Well, I mean, I'd be probably be in shock. So I don't even know if I'd show any you know, major emotion. Sure. And, and you're, but, and the last thing you're thinking, if you defended yourself is like, oh, I need to make sure I say this. And so they actually teach you or these, the, the, do the insurances. Like you tell the, the officers that you're fully cooperating, but can I make a phone call to my, my lawyer? And they have somebody who will literally handle it from right there with you. Wow. Because of that. And I'm like, wow, I just never really thought wow. about like how much that could screw you on how you say that. And yeah. just think you're scared. Adrenaline's going. Yeah. You're not thinking like, oh, I need to make sure I communicate it this way because yeah. if I don't. The whole fear, the, the crappy part, because a lot of houses on the East Coast, I think a lot of them are not like this, that the scary part is because here in California, the houses are all sheetrock and you fire a gun, it, it's going to go through several walls. It'll mm -hmm. hit, even if it hits the guy or, yeah. or the perpetrator, yeah. that scares me. You know what I mean? Because your kid or whatever could be in the other room. That scares yeah. the shit out of me. Yeah. That's the part that I, oh. yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hopefully, anyway. hopefully none of that happens, right? No, yeah. yeah. No. Hopefully, hopefully no. I have something speaking of our kids and stuff that I it, I have feel like Katrina was just like you know that's gonna blow up in your face, right? And I'm like, what happened? Well, I this started like maybe a month ago, and I I thought it was funny and cute, and then if, you know like many things I'm sure we do with our kids where it's like you think it's funny and cute, and then you start to catch it happening more and more, and you're like, oh maybe this is not a good thing, right? Yeah. So uh, I don't even remember what the thing that we were doing, but. Max and I were doing something and uh and he's like, What are we where are we going or what are we doing? I'm like, Oh, me and you, just just the boys. They're just the boys are gonna go do this, right? Uh -huh. I did that. And he's like, Okay, like you could tell it like clicked on him, like, oh, not mommy, just the boys, just the boys are gonna go. And so that's become this thing, like, Daddy, just the boys, right? Just the boys can do that. Just the boy everything's uh -oh. yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Katrina's like <laughs> like, and, like he's like even, I mean, now it's like turning to everything that he does. He looks over at me and it's like, yeah, the only boys can do this, right, Dad? Oh, like, no. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> only boys. And she he was like doing a whole yeah, letter from school. Yeah, it's like turned into like like it went to something uh, cute that him and I, just the boys go do. Yeah. To now, like only us boys do can do this, and mommy can't do it, girls can't do it, just boys can do it. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I'll tell you a common one that backfires. Have you have you taught your kid how to pee outside yet? Yeah, that often backfires. You gotta be careful. Yeah, I think I think every dad goes through that. Yeah, where you teach your kid to pee out backyards, then he just does it. Somewhere. That's all he wants oh, yeah. to do, or he pees out in public. Yeah, my somewhere. my youngest did that when we were downtown Santa Cruz, <laughs> and like oh, yeah. he just fought because we'd find a tree, you know, out in my backyard. <laughs> so he, just up to so he found a tree, and he's just like we're outside of Starbucks, and his <laughs> pants are in his ankles, and he's just and then. I just stop and it's like I'm not gonna stop a midstream. <laughs> people walking by like laughing and I'm like, ah. Is they cracking up or <laughs> what? what are you gonna do? Yeah, they're cracking up. Well, well, you know, young like, enough to get you know yeah. pulled off. What's taking me? It's for, different when you're a man. Uh, what's a taking different. me forever to break him of from from peeing is because his mom taught him how to how to use the restroom initially. Right, she potty trained him. Is uh, he he wants to wipe his wiener after he's done peeing? Yeah. I'm like, no, you shake it. Yeah, shake. Yeah, 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 so I'm like, teach him to shake uh, it. And he has this. He wants to grab the toilet yeah, paper. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. you don't need the toilet paper, bro. You just you sh We just shake. Yeah, we just yeah, shake yeah, all the yeah. time like that. Yeah, the but because he learned how to do it yeah, that way, because yeah. mom taught him to, to wipe. We've the always taught the little one, the little boys to wipe. Like oh, that. you have to always. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Always. Oh, see, because you the little bro, you get a two and a half year old. Yeah, they don't shake. shake. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Shake becomes <laughs> shake and spray. It becomes art. <laughs> yeah, real fast. Yeah, That's everywhere. exactly what her thought yeah. process was. Okay, so he'll be okay. Yeah, he'll be yeah. fine. But he'll, it's hilarious. At so. some point, you're like, wait a minute. They call <laughs> yeah, it a yeah. Jackson Pollock or whatever. Where it's like dots. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The shake. Yeah. Anyway, shake. So I read. So did you guys hear about this bill that passed the house on TikTok? Yes. Okay. So it would ban TikTok. That's now here's the deal. We, okay, that's Justin the cover Ma story, right? God, Justin's on it. I love it. He's always on it. Bro, tell me this isn't like the the <sighs> whole uh Patriot Act type of deal. Boy, you guys have gotten good with this shit. I, I'm, yes. full, I'm full Tim Foiled hat now, yes, too, dude. dude. I'm all in. We, could, all, we converted it. So yeah. somebody now I now default to that first now. <laughs> somebody that I respect quite a bit uh in government because they they're, they're very transparent, Justin Amash. He always breaks bills down. He always talks about uh, you know, what's in them or, hey, we can't pass this yet because it's 300 pages and we just got it. They want us to pa pass it an hour later, you know, stuff like that, right? So here's what he says. Yeah. This, the so-called TikTok ban is the government's latest effort to control speech and control you. Wow. The bill's definitions, ready for this, give it broad potential applications. As with the Patriot Act, FISA, and AUMFs, mm. 
the executive branch, the executive branch, the president, will maximally exploit each provision to amass and abuse power. In other words, this bill, what they're doing, and this is what they always do very well, is they said, oh, we think we could get Americans behind this TikTok ban because China owns it yeah. and they don't like their kids using it. And I mean, even me, like initially I hear this and I'm like, yeah, this, this, yeah let's ban this social media. Right. But really what they're doing is they're using that to put through a bill that gives them power to start to really regulate social media companies mm. and regulate our is there ever Is there ever a bill that's no. just pure? Nope. Is there ever like a straightforward well, like, hey, this is just cut and dry, or is it like there's always this like I'm always fascinated malicious by intent. that. You know, with uh, how many lawyers it must take for them to write these like novels of uh, yeah. uh, you know bills and things they're trying to push through, and then the time frame they give all of you know the House of representatives and the Senate. To time vote on to it? vote or, or even know. read it. I, that, they that's, don't even have people that can read the whole thing. It's I've I've heard of scenarios where it it just drops it's mind and, they're, they're, and then they're, they're voting, voting the next day, yeah. twenty four hours <laughs> yeah. later. And it's like There's and it's five hundred pages. It it's like who the fuck reads five hundred mm -hmm. pages in twenty four hours? Not like, and, well. And the yeah. strategy literally is if you are a politician and you want to give funding or your your funders, right, the people that donate to your campaign, whoever they want money. One of the best ways to do it is to throw it in a bill in the middle somewhere and then name the bill something or have something in it that people would get behind would get behind yeah and then next thing you know your wow. buddies are getting money and and yeah. or you're getting more well, power just all the foreign aid and stuff like that just ends up uh you know getting smashed in there you're just like what we're giving like billions of dollars elsewhere you know, know. through this and yeah. do, you, do you feel like this is like last ditch ditch effort by the government to like do these these because i feel like more and more people are waking up like I don't know. Like after watching I mean, the the the, uh, the octopus death thing that I watched, I was just like, so I think everyone's been asleep for so long mm -hmm. that it's becoming. I feel now the average person when so, something gets posted that's coming from the government or a new bill comes out, I feel like there is this. There's more distrust than there's ever been before. Where in the past it felt like like. Oh, it's mm. uh, their government. They're here to protect us. Like where I feel like way more people yeah. distrust the information What's first. What's the expression? Grasping straws or yeah. uh, uh, it's like their last ditch effort, I believe. To <sighs> Maybe. Like I don't know, man. All you got to do is scare people and then you typically get what you want. You know, I mean, what they passed. I mean, we were alive in September 11th. We were yeah. all tw held in our 20s or teens. And after that, they passed shit they would have never passed before. Mm -hmm. And they would call it things like Patriot Act or you know, the National Defense Authorization Act. Um, and they, because people are scared. Look what happened with COVID. COVID comes. Now, by the way, they're labeling it a flu. Other country, Many countries now are saying, oh, this we regard this like a flu. When COVID happened, it wasn't that long ago when it happened, the stuff that they got away with, that people allowed them to get away with, oh. was just insane. Uh, even supported half the time because yeah. people were scared. So You didn't have a choice. It yeah. was pretty insane. Well, I mean, you, you, you kind of did if everybody kind of stuck together, you know, but... People were just, it's easy to scare. No, I mean, yeah, they were eliminating your choices. I yeah, yeah, so I don't know. And then speaking of this, the the, the whistleblower for the Boeing. Uh, oh, bro. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Can we just, yeah. It's just so like, what happened, okay, he, so this he guy. committed suicide. Is that the story? Yeah. Yeah. So he, this is the guy that came out and said, Boeing is, they're putting uh, stuff together too fast. They're not doing uh, enough like checks on their equipment, or uh -huh. they're putting things out that are faulty, like the, the whatever that system is that comes down that gives you the mask, the oxygen system. Uh -huh. So he was about to go to court to testify against Boeing, mm -hmm. and then killed himself. They found yeah. him it, it committed suicide. Yeah. Now the 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 crazy thing is that Boeing almost half of their funding comes from the government because of their military contracts. Yeah. So that's where that everybody has you know everybody's alarm bells are. Are ringing because you know that's national security, right? If you crush that company with a lawsuit, that could hurt national security. It's just like there's so many cases like that of suicide that are like just suspect. It's like, are we ever going to see one of them get thoroughly investigated by like an outside party that has no vested interest in no. military industrial no, complex? Nothing was worse than Epstein. Come on. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> that one, one too. Bro. It's just cameras it, stop working. It's the go to. Security guard fell it's asleep. still working. It's <laughs> like, like what the hell? I know. How crazy. quickly we just forget about it too. 
how quickly to is like that was like so wild and everybody like up in arms and then it's just like oh we forgot about I it know. like no one talks about it anymore. Know, like we never got the full list of people he, like you know, he killed himself no. go to the cameras eventually oh, she should come out with a book, book you know and then it's like a tell all and they're all like dead already yeah. <laughs> <laughs> know, great thanks you gotta love it you gotta well, love it. i have other news business news outside of the conspiracy theories we'll move away from that uh, did you see Prime now is what? so Jake Paul, Logan Paul, the boys, right? Yeah. Uh, signed with NFL with, um, oh. I think the Kansas City Chiefs. Wow. What? Yeah, bro. Wow. So the WWE, and, I mean, you're talking. Those they're two mega I want to know, and maybe we can keep an eye on this, uh, how much the How market, much money's? I want to know the market share of like, of, uh, electrolyte energy drinks, whatever. And what, um, how close they are to like catching up to like a Gatorade, right? That's been that's been established in the sports world for you know decades now. Like they are, they are making moves, quick moves, fast, yeah. dude, yeah. real fast. So they create this partnership. How do you think it works? Do you think the NF, like who is it? The NFL or no? It's not the whole NFL. It's the Chiefs. Yeah, it's the Chiefs right now. But I mean, that's your first. I mean, that's the, I don't know. So I don't even know. How, how would what, that work? Would that be like uh, we pay you to do this, or we work together, share the revenue? So I imagine. No, I imagine. Okay, so uh, I don't know this for sure, but I imagine the way Gatorade always worked. I mean, it's massive uh, advertising for Gatorade. Totally. That's what so I, that's Gatorade point, is going to Gatorade is going to supply all the drinks you could possibly want for your teams. Plus, they're going to pay right. the NFL huge to be the official, be the official drink. Yeah, and they're going to make sure that none of the players are drinking the competitive right, stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. So, and, and that, in fact, that's such a strict rule that yes. if you were you playing find. on a team uh, and you were drinking a, a competitor Gatorade, you'd have to put tape over it. Yep. You couldn't mm. even have a bottle that had something else. Like, okay, there's the market share. Wow. Wait, they're wait, not even scratching wait. the surface yet. So, what's Gatorade at? What is that? Six point seven billion. Prime is only at two hundred and fifty million right now. But boy, boy look at look at look at death. Where? Yeah, they're above Pedialyte. That's wow. pretty legit. Look oh death. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Sports and energy drinks and Pedialyte is this there. is a cool. I mean, you, it's how is it an electrolyte, electrolyte drink? That's, that's you, Doug. Mm -hmm. I want. I want that clip. That's an, I've never seen that before. That's, What's that one? With five this? hour energy. Wait, what are all those? Okay, well, you know all of them. A Gatorade body armor. You Rockstar know that. Are still beating them. Five hour. Five hour energy. Bang. Bang. No, what's that one after five hour energy? What is that? Uh, body armor? Oh, okay. Body or armor. no, Leucozade. Leucozade. I have no idea what That's that is. That's the only one I don't oh, know. That? All the rest I know. Rockstar, Bang, Prime, Liquid Death, Pedialyte. Leucozade in Europe. Yeah, it must be another country. Wow. And then Pedialyte. Is, hey, <laughs> how, <laughs> how, how impressive is it? Is five hour energy? Just a... That shit, pro that shit product has been around Can for so no. long. No. No. no, it's not They've shit. They've dominated it's not. I don't mean that it's not shit. Like no, it's, it's strong. Product. It was like the first- It like, is the smart. It was the smartest. I remember when 5-Hour Energy came out. as Because it, yeah. it's been out. I find out. See how long it's, it's been out, It's a small dog. container. Yes. You know, for I'm middle like, of the day. I'm like, this is brilliant. When it yeah. first came out, I'm like, yeah. this little tiny Everybody bottle. Everybody bonks in the middle of the day. You get your massive bo boost of, of energy, yeah. and you don't have to drink a big can of whatever or take pills because people feel- Now, Body Armor either- Either yeah. merged or was acquired by somebody. So there's a, there's there's a reason why they're that high already too. I forget who. So 2004 was five hour energy. 2004. Really? Yeah. yeah. So what if you came out impressive. with like a, what if you came out six like hour a, energy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> six yes. minute abs. Yeah. <laughs> five and a half hour Boom. energy. Oh, there it is right there. Oh, Stark. It was. It's with the quarterback. Oh, oh it's with. Oh, okay, so it was with Mahomes. Yeah, so the, oh. the partnership isn't with the Chiefs themselves. Interesting. So I wonder how that works. I'm surprised so he, they can do that. How he can sign with them while Gatorade is an official sponsor of of the NFL. Huh. Maybe off. Maybe I on a social media. Maybe on a healthier alternative. Okay. Yeah, maybe on a social media. Yeah, I, yeah. I, he might not be able to drink that at the games. We'll see. That'll be you know. Try telling the, the face of the NFL he can't do that. I mean, you're talking about. I know he is the golden yeah, boy right yeah. now. Yeah, so that you know, I heard a stat. So I heard a, a, a stat on something, Sal, that what? I want to know if you is true. Uh, it, it was it's actually in one of like uh, uh, I was reading one of um, Max's books, and it's like a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a, it's like a science. It was actually like a science devotional and something else book. It was like, and they made a point about, and they were talking about um, electrolytes in it. And that in back in the days, and they were talking about like desert lands and stuff like that, that uh, where there's not a lot of uh, water and stuff, milk, and that you can get as much electrolytes from uh, milk as you can from any of these like- uh, Or that you need, that milk provides you with those yes. essential. Yes, yes. Probably. 
That makes a lot of sense. Hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't know they had that much. Yeah, either did I? Like, like content. In yeah, there. nah, hmm. that would make sense. It's uh, I mean, it's it's a milk, right? So you would think that that um, the human it's breast milk would probably have that mammal, as well, right? Yeah. So that would make a lot of sense. Look up the electrolyte content in milk. Uh huh. Well, yeah. So I thought that was really interesting, and because it, it was talking about desert lands, right, where there's not a lot of of water and rain and stuff like that, and how they survive. Decent source of sodium and potassium. Uh huh. Wow. Do you know who drank a lot of milk? The Mongols, wasn't it? Yep. The Mongols. Mm -hmm. Yep. They would. They would. Th Milk that was cheese. By, that was one of the secrets to their ability to conquer. Besides their fighting style. That they would travel and they would drink, they would have milk and they would look have at, cheese that they would at, consume. They found that milk may be more effective than water or sports drinks as restoring and maintaining normal hydration status after exercise. Yeah. Most yeah. likely to do to milk electrolyte content and energy. You density. know what's crazy? Isn't whenever we talk about milk, Interesting. whenever we talk about milk, there's always people that comment afterwards that I don't know how that this weird. It's got to be PETA. It's got to be this super propaganda machine. Yes, yeah. dude. That somehow milk is like, it's one of the most nutrient dense, like healthy foods on the planet. How like, weird is it? We've been steered so far away from things like eating meat. That's like obviously bioavailable and has lots of nutrients in it. And we've been doing since the dawn of time yeah. and drinking milk and, you know, clean water. It's like- it's all propaganda. It's, it's all propaganda and people are so swayed by it and they I don't want to like use their brain. Do you know there was a period there where it's not like this anymore. Now it's now people understand and know, but there was a period there when formula was first created. Well, they said it was better. They said it was better than breast milk. Such bullshit. And women <laughs> well, were encouraged. Well, didn't, didn't formulas sign big contracts with hospitals yes. and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. You and wonder. they were encouraged. Yeah. Do you know that? That, yeah. that women yes. were encouraged there to was have a time, There was a time where it was Maybe being, look that up, Doug. It I was being that promoted was on TV as better than- Like our scientists have made it yes. you know, a superior formula. Yes. Such bullshit. Such dude. arrogance too. Uh, yeah. It's it's wild to me. But there was there was a period there and I want to say, oh, I think it might've been the 50s or 60s or maybe 70s. Oh, longer after that. Later. No, no, no. When they were told, when women were encouraged. Yes. Hey, dude. I this thought that was like a, 80s. That wasn't that long even ago. Even in the 80s? I think encouraged? so. Oh, I think so. Man. Wow. I don't know. Were you guys formula? No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm yeah, same. I wasn't. Yeah. yeah. You were too? No. You were breastfed. Breast? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah no. I, oh, my God. The women in my family are funny. I have yeah. a cousin who was breastfed too. It was like three and a half. <laughs> wow. we got, we had, He'd walk up we had, to his no, mom we had, we, and he would ask for it. Mom, can I have some milk? Katrina, you know? Katrina's got Katrina's got family that's like that. That that their 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 daughter was all the way till almost four. I oh think. my! Yeah, <laughs> like walk over, just like pull the shirt down. Yeah, no. <laughs> it makes you think of Game that's of a Thrones. Weird. Or yeah, that. That is, <laughs> I mean, little like it is. Mama. It's so weird to us, but in reality, back in the days when food was so scarce, if you had a natural source of food to be able to feed your child, you would probably have done that for as long as you call it. Absolutely. Sure could. I mean, survival wise. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I mean, you're talking about taking the pressure off of me going and hunting. I got to get one last fucking deer. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause yeah, yeah. you got that covered all the way. And until it, and it gives sure them your, your wife's like, yeah, well fed and everything. Yes. You know? Yeah. So hydrated. I know we, we just, de we need to be socially weird and unacceptable. I, I'm like, for me, I'm like, I think we should stop when they remember. You know what I mean? I don't want my kid to grow up and remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> Recipe, They're you know definitely I mean? gonna have a preference. Like, I don't remember. Ask and if, or you can't get an argument with you. No, I want it right now. Yeah, yeah. No, not right now. Yeah. We're in public. Right now. No, like, I want it right now. Like I was breastfed. I don't remember it. Yeah. I'm happy. I don't remember. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I don't want to go back. I don't oh, want to mess that up. All these kids walking. Around. What you got I, over there, Doug? What it you seems were? like it was in the 1960s. Yeah. The oh, okay. doctors started to really promote it. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the idea was that it was more scientific and complete and better than breast milk. More yeah. scientific. How long did that run for? I think it ran for a while, Sal. It, it it was, it was, I, I think there's a lot of people who still think that maybe. I do no, think. Not yet, yet, no, well, not anymore. Not, said, even, said not the, even the doctors will say it anymore. It said in the 70s and 80s Bro, there yes, was there finally people, pushback. There is people yeah. that still think that. Yeah. That I do think there error? are people who think it. There, uh, there are the same ones people that, say, trust the that think, uh, you know, part of it, just naive. Just naive because they're they're not around. E even, you okay, won't find a medical you source to, anymore that says you that. You would have to ask the doctor, is this better or not? They, they don't say that. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. So yeah. If, if if that has been perpetuated since the 60s, yeah. there are people yeah. that think that. I, the, by, There's a but, lot of reading material that will point to that. Yeah. Now, still, yeah. for, you know, and, and on top of that, formulas have come a long way. Like to, to, to the fact that they said this in the 60s, 
when they first invented formulas. Yeah, yeah. It was fucking, but they didn't, it was basically protein powder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they didn't even <laughs> test it. It was like non-fat milk, you yeah, know, yeah, and throw some like, like designer way. It's now like, it's you know now it's it's come a long yeah. way, and yeah, it, and yeah. now of course it serves an incredible purpose. There's definitely oh, situations it's when amazing. Carnation needed, beat God at but, what he does. But best. Yeah. man, that's that's uh, <laughs> okay. More more uh, business news. Yeah. So um, do you guys know the company that bought out uh, Blippy? Um, I think they're called, it's called Moon. Oh, oh, oh. Moonbug. M- Moonbug. Is it Moonbug? Yeah, I think Moonbug is the company Didn't that- Didn't they buy Coco Melon too? Yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. Uh, very good, dad. Yeah. These are dad yeah. You guys said yeah. young dad, ones. Yeah, <laughs> dad like, trivia, right? Uh, here. Here's, Here's your dad trivia. I skipped tonight. past the blippy phase. Yeah. So, uh, Gary V just signed a big deal with Moonbug. To uh, make his V friends into, I think, a cartoon. V Maybe, friends? Yeah, v, yeah. Are you not following all that? No. So, okay, it's like his NFT project that he did. Uh, so he did like a bunch of NFT stuff that was called V Friends and signed a big deal with Moonbug. And maybe one of the guys over there, one of our two producers, can pull up the article for me. Um, <clears throat> I, I, it sounds like they're going to make a cartoon. There we go. Moonbug and Vanner want uh, co animated series based on V Friends franchise. What? Yeah. That's weird. Interesting. It Re- is. Really, really interesting, especially it since is. a lot of these NFT projects really have flopped. I mean, if you're not getting sued. All of them. Yeah. Yeah. Almost everybody I know is is, is So this up. is how he's like pivoting, trying to still use uh, that content? Yeah, yeah. I it's I, I don't know like how he's going to integrate that into the NFT. What's it say right there? YouTube in September. It will launch on YouTube in September. <sighs> Oh, Moonbug and Vanner Watt both attach. Huh. Vanner Watt co-founder of V Friends is billed as a co- it's a contemporary. Oh, okay. No, he's the- V Friends is focused on collectibles, events, games, and technology based around characters who aim to make soft skills cool. What's a soft skill? Soft skill, yeah. It's it's communication skills like one to one, like uh, oh. being able to uh, have like small talk kind of. Oh, interesting. Do you, yeah, are that. you noticing the? So we talked about this a while back, right? Though, and I think it was at least a few years ago when we predicted that education would be like the next big industry that would yes, be disrupted. Super disruptive. Are you okay? You have uh, Jordan Peterson. You have um, who else did we just talk to? Jocko. Uh, Jocko. You have uh, Alex Her- Ramosi. Mm-hmm. You have all these guys creating. Who I'm missing some other big one that's being created right now. Tim too. Kennedy has a school. Uh, a lot too, of people are creating, are creating their own education, their own education systems in schools. Of course, and it's starting to pop. Big people too. Big Elon people. That, Musk? Huh? Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Elon. Elon. That, there was the one that was. I was like, I, there's someone bigger. There's. Oh, is that the V Friends right there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Huh? huh? Super wild. They're kind of weird looking characters. <laughs> they do look a little creepy. <laughs> yeah. Look at the guy in the middle with the big nose. Yeah. That's weird. I don't, you know, I don't you know. know. Do you, are, Andrew, are you familiar with uh, how his NFT project worked and if it was successful oh, or not, or if it's still <laughs> hanging in there? I, mean, I know that he created hundreds of them, and yeah. each one had some sort of utility, which just means it could be used to be a VIP or have ticket access to one of his events and things like that. But I know mm. that all of his, like, the names were, they were, they were drawn purposely to, as if kids drew them, and the names were like Gratitude Gorilla. Clever crocodile, things like that. So it makes sense for them to go in this direction. Ah, uh, interesting. Mm. Do you think you could be someone like that? Like that, ups- and Elon Musk would get thrown in this category. Peterson would get thrown in this category. Th- that obsessed with, call it money, power, growth, network, whatever you want to call it, uh, with that, and be like, balanced in in your life at all like oh you, no way no yeah like no. how most of them i think the they're obsessed. Uh, self-aware ones do admit that you know that there's like definite like um deficits in certain areas of their life find me an extreme extreme performer in any category and it would, i would think i would be shocked if they were bal- if they had balance yeah. in their life and 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 is and where like how do you how do you take from that Right, the the yeah. the skills that they they've learned to apply to become very successful, right, or financially free, but then also find a way that oh, I also want to be a good husband and a dad and a friend, and I want to enjoy, be present, and all these things like that. Like, how do you how do you juggle that? And then is, is it is it run like them and have their mentality, and then be self aware enough when you when you reach a level that you provide all these comfort things or is it along the way you're always checking back in going like hey am i too much in this direction like what is the i don't know man i think part of it like uh, that i've seen uh, when 
um, I've seen like high performers like that or like really famous people try really hard to make that work or like have some kind of family. They have to like incorporate them in all their stuff, you know, like they bring them to the set, they have them do their school, you know, right around them. Like they, it, but again, then at the same time, like they're all grown up, like just experiencing everything they're doing. Yeah. You know, they don't have their own life that they're really. Leaving. Yeah. I feel like, um, I mean, is there anybody that, that inspires you that you guys see? Like there's like, like I don't, I would have, there's, I don't even want to, I would never want to be any of those dudes. Yeah. Like no. none of that sounds even appealing to me. No, no. no. I, I, can't I, I think one. they're tortured too. Yeah. I think it's a torturous uh, existence. I think, uh, and what's interesting is we um, idolize them because they, offer society so much like yeah. oh my god they, they built this and they did that well they're super valuable yeah but there's a lot of probably a lot of sacrifice on their end and pain uh, on their end i think ideally what you would do is before you have those really important things in your life like uh family that then you can say well it's just me and i'm young so let me just go as obsessive as I can. But then when you're ready to start a family and do all that, then you have to figure it out. That's, I, I think that would be like, if I was to like lay out a blueprint of, you know, and, and assessing how I, how I did things or how I didn't do things and going like, okay, talking to like a young teenager or a young, someone in their early twenties, I think the advice I would probably give is like, take a lot of what those guys have done. Yeah. And, uh, the, the obsessiveness with the career path and the passion and the, drive to grow and do all those things like and, and read and learn and level up and network and everything. like take, take from them. But then at one point, you know, if you're this person who does want to have a family and settle down and have that like that, be self-aware enough to recognize yeah. that that's a massive shift in, and yeah, you can have to start sacrificing. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and, and balancing in balancing a different, in a different way, right? Like your priorities yeah. will shift. And I also, I also think it's, um, cause I got caught in that trap, right. When I, when I was younger, um, and I had my, my first two, I think, um, I think we don't quite understand or a lot of people don't understand what really makes people happy. So we think it's, it's a lot of money is going to make me happy or looking perfect is going to make me happy or, achieving a certain level of honor, which could be fame or prestige or wherever you're at, right? Like I have the highest PhD or, you know, all these people know me on social media. And and so they chase that, but that's not going to get make you happy. The stuff that makes you like truly happy and the data shows are the things that like, you don't hear people being like, you know, here's John. He's like the father of the year. You know what I mean? No, like there's no like, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're, we're not talking about John, the father of the year. We're talking about Elon Musk who created all these incredible things. And I'm not taking anything away from that. No, because we, we need those people. We do. It's, and we it's absolutely, absolutely do. necessary. You know what's weird? If 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 humanity, if beha human behavior was different, we wouldn't. If, hum if human behavior was so that we kind of work together uh -huh. and we're friendly and giving <laughs> with each other, we wouldn't need- Too much to ask, Sal. We wouldn't need like these geniuses to invent these crazy, you know- Well, now, you're, now you're advocating for the social systems. No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, I didn't say forced. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Co-ops and shit, no, bro. No, 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 no. Dude. That's forced. Yeah. Sal the socialist. I'm talking about, no, yeah. voluntary is the key here. That's no. an unfortunate <laughs> ring to it. There's a big difference between force <laughs> and doing it voluntarily. Uh, but it's, it, I mean, you're right. It's human nature for us to, to, to not be that yeah, way, yeah. which is why I think the, the capitalist model works so well. Is that it's yeah, like, it mitigates the worst of us and kind of helps spread the good yeah, of us. Yeah, it's, but it's by perfect. no means does it make it perfect. No. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, and you're still going to have your, no. your outliers and no, stuff. But I'd rather have a you know an evil capitalist uh, than an evil dictator. Uh, yeah. Like way you got a lot more options. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> they, no can both, they can both mess with dictator. me, you know, hurt me. Yeah. The, the, the dictator is really scary. Yeah. How oh. do you guys, okay, so I got to ask you guys right. now. We're now uh, about 70 minutes in after everybody took a dose of joy mode. Okay. So joy mode. What's how do you your guys joy do? level? Yeah, no, 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 no listen. <laughs> I, so, so joy mode is, is marketed as a, good. as a supplement for blood flow you know, pre-sex, right. Helps with, you know, that kind Does of stuff. Does it promote that you like get really energized? Cause that's what yes. I feel. So that's, that's not what it's sold for. It's sold for blood flow, nitric huh. oxide for sexual performance, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I take it in the middle of the day cause it makes me feel good. And I, and I think it's the combination of the, the ginseng that's in there hmm. and some of the nitric oxide. Doug knows the same thing. I mean, mm -hmm. I will take it for the same. Uh, yeah. Season. I do. I do feel like it might be, a little, it might be a little hack when we, cause when we get about this time in the studio, besides the boner, just I, 
<laughs> How I'm is excited. that, by the way? How's your butt? Since, since, yeah. oh, so, since here's, we, a, here's a towel. <laughs> since we Can asked. you hold it up? No. The camera's going when up we, when, when we're in the studio it, at this point, right, this far into the day. After I, being in the cave? Yeah, mm. I tend to really dip. But I don't have that feeling today in this, like, this qual, right? Like, I feel like... I have way more energy. So maybe that will be like a little hack. It's like after I eat lunch, maybe I'll pound one of those joints. Yes, because it's not caffeine. Yeah. That's 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 and why I you don't see me back to go yeah. back there. I'll take it. Uh, yeah. yeah I like how it is. I feel it for I, sure. How, how, what, have Legit. you been getting because we we've now re-signed with them a few times. It was a company that this is a there's sometimes there's companies where I, I hear it and I'm like, yeah, I'm not a, that Sal's gotta approve that because I don't know enough or I'm not like I don't know. I don't see people really getting into that. You go, yes, I like it. Let's do it. Have you gotten feedback yeah. from people? Oh, you have. Uh huh. So of course you get the messages like, "Oh, you know, my girlfriend and I, or my, I took it with my my wife. I definitely noticed an improvement." But I'm getting a lot of messages from people who like it uh, for energy or as a pre workout because of the the pump because of the mm. blood flow. Mm. So that's how I like to take it. Oh. Like I said, I take it midday here so that I'm you know aroused when I'm around. No, that's not. What I, <laughs> I take it midday. <laughs> Because it's not a stimulant, I don't want to take caffeine this late in the day. Yeah. But I still want to have. Now, a if I energy. were if I were to not work out, say for another hour or so, would it still be effective, or is it not close enough to that? Because we took it now almost 45, 50 minutes ago, at least. No, you. I think the the in, the increased production of nitric oxide should last you for a good at least few hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. So all right, go well, test it out. Yeah, I'll report afterwards what the what the workout was like. All right. Who's a shout out? Uh oh, here's a shout out. So uh, podcast episode. So. <laughs> Um, Alex Hermosi and Chris Williamson. Chris Williamson, uh, Modern Wisdom, I think one yeah. of the best. One of our favorite interviewers. I think he's one of the best podcast interviews in the game. In fact, I would argue that he is. I think he's, I enjoy his interviews better than Joe Rogan's. Um, and he does this thing. He does this thing with Hormozy. He's So if you pull it up, you'll see he's got quite a few interviews with him. About every six months, they're friends. He will bring Hormozy on uh, the podcast. And Chris is a very intelligent guy as it is. He's a very talented uh, interviewer. And one of the, the styles that he does is he lets like six months pass by between him and Hormozy meeting. And then he'll take all of Alex's like most controversial tweets and basically make him explain himself and he'll, you oh, know, good. he'll defend it and then he'll, he'll go deeper, ask him deeper questions on his thought process on that or challenge it. And so it's just a really, uh, really cool, especially if you follow or pay attention to Alex Ramosi. I definitely think that his interviews with Chris are by far the, the best that he ever does. So go check out that, that uh, podcast, uh, Modern Wisdom. Get Dynasty is a company that allows you to get a trust, a living trust in five minutes for free. It costs nothing. You can go on the website, set yourself up with a trust. By the way, trust is better than a will because a will has to go through probate court. A trust doesn't. A living trust is a personal and private entity that you create. You can move your property into. Nobody knows who it is. So instead of owning your homes, investments, banks, your trust owns them, and then you control the trust. Again, it's free. It takes five minutes to set up. There's no hidden costs, nothing like that. It's the first of its kind. Go check them out. Go to getdynasty.com. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Matthew from Illinois. What's up, Matthew? How can we help you? What up, Matt? Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, it's awesome to be on here. Um, I appreciate the time. Just to start off, wanted to say, I know there's been some uh, debate over Team Adams and Team Justin and <laughs> Team Sal's, and uh, I'm just here to represent Team Stand When I Pee. I don't know where I fall. <laughs> oh, that means yes. you're you're on. Yeah, yeah, you're cutting out, Matt. We can't yeah, uh, hear yeah, you yeah. anymore. You're, Sorry. You're team man card is what yeah, they, yeah. we call that one. Yeah. Good job, bro. Uh, Good job. It's okay. Are you are you able to hear me? No, he was just kidding. <laughs> just, <he's, laughs> oh. you, you heard us. <laughs> Dang, you walked right. right into yeah, that, dude. Yeah. I did uh, it. I uh, did. Um, but uh, also, just before I get into my question, I wanted to say it's uh, it's been uh. Your podcast has given me a lot of knowledge. It's helped a ton, both personally and professionally. Went through a reverse diet after losing the weight the wrong way. Uh, increased my maintenance by a thousand calories and was able to have a successful reverse diet, able to fix my mobility that didn't allow me to squat, even get the bar behind my head was impossible. Um, and then professionally becoming a trainer, becoming lead trainer, going to manager 
Uh, it's just been an awesome ride, and a lot of it is in part to what you guys provide. So thank you. That's awesome. But you're still pissing all over the seats like these clowns, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Freedom, it's all, dude. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, all right. No so, hands, uh, too. How can we help you, man? I yeah, can tell. So yeah. basically, uh, just calling. I'll kind of just read good. what I emailed. So in the past few years, I've gone on multiple bulks. Uh, I've tried smaller calorie surpluses going into the bulk, larger surpluses going into the bulk. Um, and in both scenarios, I'll add weight to the scale slowly over time, but all the weight tends to be body fat. I feel, um, for reference during my bulks, I'll typically gain 12 to 15 pounds through the fall and winter. I'll do three to four weeks in a surplus and one week at maintenance or a slight deficit. During the entire bulk, weigh myself, measure fat percentage, get waist measurement every week and just follow the trends. Uh, my waist and fat percentage will always go up with the scale. I've tried going slower, adding only 100 calories every few weeks, and I still increase fat percentage with the scale weights. Uh, workouts are traditional strength training, whether I'm bulking or cutting, just changing the stimulus or the program. I follow a lot of the MAPS programs. Uh, I've been slowly getting stronger over the years at my big compound lifts and just non-compound lifts, but I feel a lot of that has to do with my mobility and just practice of the movements getting better, giving me those strength gains. Appearance and body metrics haven't really changed. Uh, I've also noticed one of the weird things that happens is every time I go into a cut phase, especially the beginning of a cut phase, I'll actually put muscle on for the first few weeks, being in roughly a 500 calorie deficit. I'll get stronger while the scale's dropping after the first few weeks. Then I just seem to maintain muscle and lose body fat. Um, but all of my PRs, uh, really my biggest strength gains are during a cut. I think he's eating something so, he's intolerant to. Yeah, that's that's a uh, that's strange. Yeah, mm. it's, it's a weird it's a weird thing to cut calories and you notice strength go up. Do you and, change your workout? Mm -hmm. Um, I do, but it's typically like so. I've run I've run anabolic on a cut and in a bulk. I've run performance in a cut and a bulk. Um, those are the two I can think of where I've done both. And I res I've responded the best to both of those programs in a cut or at maintenance. When I go into a bulk, I really the only thing I notice is maintaining everything but gaining body fat. So you don't go into a cut and change programs right when the cut. You're doing the same program the whole time, or do you change when you go into a cut versus a bulk? I'll change. Yeah. That's, so that's anytime I from. change, hmm. yeah, that's where the strength gains are coming from. Do you do you typically go to reduced volume when you go into a cut? Is your maintenance less than you think? Uh for so first for Sal, um, uh, you said do I do less volume when I go into a cut? Is that what you said? Yeah. Um probably not. I know I went from anabolic in a bulk one year to performance in a cut. So performance seems to have more volume than, than anabolic. Yeah. Okay. It's the change of the program. I think that's giving you the strength gains. It could be that, but the other, the other example I have when people that's happened to people is when they are, they have some sort of an intolerance and the reduction of that. They just, I mean, you're an example of this. Yeah. Do you, do you, you know, talk about this one? Yeah. When you're, yeah. When you're in, in your, do you have any gut issues or what do you, what, what kind of foods are you eating in the bulk or are they different foods? So it's typically like protein. I'm always able to maintain whether I'm cutting or bulking. I'm able to maintain 180 to 200 grams just from, you know, chicken, eggs, meat sources, no problem. Um, and then really all that's changing is like carb load, more or less rice, more or less oatmeal, more or less potatoes. Um, but yeah, basically whole foods all the time. Um, uh, I've, I've gone the other way too, where, cause I'll change the stimulus or the program. Like I'll jump from one maps program to another when I'm going from maintenance into a bulk as well, but I don't seem to notice those same strength gains as when I change it going into a cut. Yeah. That's weird. The, I would, my, my inclination is to say there's some kind of gut or inflammation issue, uh, that would contribute to that. Cause 
that's very counter what, to what typically would well, what, what would happen. Yeah. It, it wouldn't make any sense um, in the other way uh, unless protein intake was different. Programming would be the other thing I would look at. Other factors we might not be considering like sleep and stuff like that. Do you generally feel better in a cut? Um, I would say not, not towards the end of a cut, um, when calories are getting down to like 2000, but when my cat, when I first start a cut and I'm in the mid two thousands, I'd say that's when my, I typically feel the best is when my calories are in the mid two thousands. Okay. Have you tried to shorten the time period of cuts and bulks where you undulate calories more regularly? In other words, like instead of doing it for extended periods of time, you just you give yourself a low calorie for a few days and then go right back to kind of maintenance or slight surplus and go back to low calorie and then kind of undulate like that because it sounds like you're getting this great response when you reduce calories. My uh, my guess is it has something to do with food intolerance or gut or something like that because that's really weird. But if that's the case, you reducing like that, uh, is obviously sitting, and it's not until the end of your cut you're saying that you feel the adverse effects of it. So why not shorten the cuts up or the time periods and undulate the calories on a more regular basis and kind of try and be more maintenance versus trying to be in a cut or necessarily a bulk all the time? Well, I think what's clear here, Matt, is, is if all the factors are controlled, right? If everything's the same except for the calories and you notice you're stronger and you feel better when you get to the mid-2000s, what you want to do is always listen to your body and ignore what might be conventional wisdom because you would think on its face it doesn't make any sense. I should feel stronger eating 2,800 calories, 2,900 calories than I do at 25, but I always feel better at 2,500 calories. Well, th there's something we're missing. Nonetheless, if you just listen to your body. So I would stay in the calorie range that makes you feel the best and not worry so much about whether or not you're in a bulk and a cut. In other words, I would base it off of your strength and how you feel and not so much on the, I'm yeah. eating a surplus or a maintenance yeah. or, or deficit. Because there, there's something we're missing here. Yeah. But regardless of what it is, if, if you just follow with how you feel, then you're going to move in the right direction. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I kind of had, uh, I guess, an idea that maybe you guys would point to the gut too, because that's kind of what I've maybe thought that it is. Uh, I don't really tend to get, any extra bloat or any like gut issues when I eat certain types of foods, but that's kind of the same thing. I just, that's kind of my unknown area too is, is gut health. Yeah. Yeah. But here's, okay. Let me give you an example of myself in this case. Like I have really subtle issues with this. Like, so uh, for that forever, I thought way never even bothered me, but what it really was, the only time it bothered me is when I had it three times in a day. If I have it once or twice, the, the, re the response is so low level that I don't see this physical response of like major bloat or major fatigue. But then when I would push it in a calorie surplus where I'm trying to eat a lot more to bulk, that's when I'd see some of these adverse effects, right? And they still weren't loud signals. It was just enough to me to start to piece together. Man, when I cut that out, I just feel so much better. And a lot of times it's the things that we eat on a regular basis. And when you're maybe in a calorie- So it's the dose that makes the poison. Exactly. So, so maybe when you're in a calorie deficit or look closer to maintenance, those signals don't really pop up until you are like in a bulk for a period of time and you've been over consuming whatever said food is. And that now said food is starting to bother you a little bit. And the best way to do that, if you're trying to, if you don't go through the whole blood work and try to figure out, is just kind of tease those foods out what they, what they potentially may be. And there, there's the high, the high offenders. I'd start with some of those and see like, Oh, what happens when I switch that food out in a bulk and in a cut, does that make yeah. a difference? But that it really points in that direction. But no matter what, to circle back to Sal's point, none of it matters if we don't get the for sure answer. The answer would still be the same of let's listen to your body. It sounds to me like you have found kind of this area where you you like your body likes to be calorie wise. When you go too too low for too long, you start to see adverse effects. When you go too high for too long, you start to see adverse effects. So maybe hovering around closer to that maintenance, dipping into the deficit for just a couple of days, going back up to and kind of playing with the calories like that may be your your best answer. And yeah. instead of being so focused on am I on a cut or a surplus or my calories, just kind of try and go off a of feel and, and intuitively. And base it off your eat. performance in the gym. That's mm -hmm. what I would do. But if you want like sure. really, if you want to really get granular, I would work with a functional medicine practitioner 
and they could run some tests to see, you know, specifically what might be going on, if anything. But at the end of the day, just just follow, listen to your gut. If 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 you feel good at twenty five hundred calories, and that's where you see the best performance, then stay there. Yeah, yeah. And the last thing I was going to add too, just to get your opinion, is like it just so happened that this week, um, I had to change up my programming and nutrition a lot because actually a week ago I ended up separating my shoulder a little bit so i've got to take things down in the gym obviously uh, but with the heavy reduction in volume just focusing on you know i went from like seven hours of sleep tonight to seven and a half hours of sleep a night and up to my calories a little bit in this case i've actually lost a few pounds in the scale in the last week even upping my calories and dropping volume so i wasn't sure if potentially volume could be an issue of course, too. Of course. That's why I asked about uh, your workouts. You know, uh, I would focus on the workout programming and eat in the way that makes you feel the best. And you might be overdoing it. You might need more sleep and less volume. Sure. Yeah, sure. That, I've seen people go into cut and get stronger because they cut the volume. And it was the programming that did it. Not right, the cut and the that also would point in the direction of the calorie surplus thing be having an adverse effect too. Because remember, the, your digestive system is like your muscular system. They're, they're all systems of the body. They all, they're all it, you know, uniquely connected. And if you're stressing all the systems out, your body's not going to respond very well. So if you're stressing your digestive system by over-consuming, simultaneously over-stressing by over-stimulating and over-training, then you could have a negative response inside the gym in performance. And then the and then the reduction it gives you some relief at least on the digestive system. So then you see this positive like, oh, thank yeah. you. At least one of my systems isn't stressing like crazy. And then you get this positive re re feeling. And then you continue that for a period of time where then now your body's like, okay, we've been low calories for a couple of weeks now. Now we're not seeing as much positive effects. So that's might be what we're we're noticing. Yeah. Our, what's the name of our forum? Is it MP Holistic Health on on mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Go to Facebook M M MP Holistic Health. It's our functional medicine forum, and you can ask some questions there. I, I do think this might be gut health uh, related. Um, that's what would make the most sense. But the only way to know for sure is to do some testing. Yeah, yeah, and I'll. Uh, yeah, I am actually in that forum, but I just have never really asked anything in there. But I'll definitely, uh, yeah, make a post it there. Yeah, I would say when I eat questions. more, when I eat more of the same foods, I actually get weaker in the gym. When I eat less of the same foods, I feel stronger in the gym. What could be going on? And then they'll, they'll, you'll, you'll probably get pointed in the right direction of, in terms of testing. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I appreciate, appreciate the feedback. And once again, thanks for everything you guys do found you guys probably six years ago and listened to almost every episode since. And it's, wow. uh, it's awesome. Thank thanks. you so much, Sick. Matt. What gym, by the thanks way, do you run in? Uh, it's an anytime fitness. Oh, good deal. Nice. All right, man. Thanks for the support, Matt. Go hit goal. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. You got it. All right. Those are the big. Are those the big? No, no, no. no, small no that's, that's small. I almost bought one of those franchises. Oh, they're the ones that's where the one. yeah, you yeah, only yeah, need yeah. like three people to manage that's them, right. and they're all self automated. That's where you right. just you yeah yeah. That's right. They're still trucking along. Yeah. I, I yeah. wonder how. It's I wonder an interesting how, model. Yeah, we. I was. I really seriously considered it, and then never pulled the trigger. Can't remember what I ended up pivoting and doing at that time in my life, but like I remember having the cost of starting one of those is uh, they're just still expensive. No, not bad at all. They're not that crazy at the all. The equipment and stuff. It was quarter million or less for a gym. That's not bad at all. I mean, well, that's you, what you I mean. It's still a quarter million. Half a million for a for, for, a, for, a, for a orange theory. For orange theory, really? Oh yeah. Uh, you want to do a big gym? You're talking a million. Yeah, a couple plus. million. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, relative, yeah. right? What a weird, uh, weird scenario. But yeah. it does point to, in my opinion, something with gut yeah, health. Of yeah, course, because yeah. and, and and it does make a little sense that the he gets this initial positive. Yeah, because then, then inflammation goes down. He's absorbing more nutrients. Everything feels healthier. And the, people have to understand this is the part of our space, the health space that I don't like is we have so many like specialties and like that they only talk to one system of the body and they mm -hmm. all are in, they're connected. Yep. And so you have to understand that if you're stressing the shit out of multiple systems that the body rebels and doesn't give an answer, and then all of a sudden you give a little bit of relief or you take care of one of those systems. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you see this positive effect. Yeah. And sometimes it could be in a different one than you think. Like he's all of a sudden he relieves his digestive system a little bit by reducing his calories. And then he sees this positive on the muscle That's side. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's like, yeah. it's not, it, it's just trying to get to the bottom of wh where, where the stress and the, the potential overtraining or over consuming of something that he shouldn't be eating. Our next caller is Rajni from Australia. Rajni. 
How nice are you? Nice to talk to you. I think I talked about you on the show, right? You're that amazing before and after we talked about and the whole transformation deal and all that. Yes, you did. Which Thank you so that? much. We she she went she had a really really rough time. Lost her daughter, uh, and then she went through this amazing transformation. Competed, fitness really changed her uh, life. You guys remember uh, that? Yeah, I do uh, remember yes. now. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, awesome! Incredible well, story. Hey, yeah. Nice yeah. to you on here. How can we help you? Um, it's first of all, I never thought I'd be, and I'm. I hear you show all the time, and everyone says it. They never thought they'll be nervous, but they get nervous. <laughs> and I thought, oh, well, it's like talking to you guys. I listen to you guys every day. I won't get nervous, but I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, you guys helped me through a lot of things, a lot of things, not just uh, exercising and eating and um, working with my anxiety. Um, even the fear at the gym, you know, I'm one of those people who went to the gym, did the deadlift and someone made a comment, oh, it's a stripper's bum. And you're like, what does it even mean? I don't have a stripper's bum <laughs> or not knowing technique um, or uh, getting conscious and listening to you guys. I've, I had learned so much and just kind of thought I'm going to get myself a coach and be perfect. At it. Still not perfect. I mean, there's no perfection. But you have really, really, really helped me through a lot of things and also made me realize what it resonated with me when Adam said that, you know, sometimes we use gym, um, something to run away from. So you guys also helped me to face that and not use gym as an addiction. I mean, when I say not use, I still do to a certain level. Uh, I do when I don't want to face something. I still go to the gym sometimes to just to process it. But there, it is a way of dealing with things. But uh, it's amazing. And thank you for your honesty and courage to even talk about these topics on running away from the gym, uh, from situations and using gym and addiction to exercising because there's so much mixed information and no one talks about it. And when someone tells you, oh, you're addicted to the gym, you think it's a, it's a compliment. Whereas, whereas you learn that I'm running, actually, I'm, it's not a compliment. Listening to you guys have opened my mind so much. It's unbelievable. So thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Um, and Justin, thank you for um, showing windmill. I hate it. <laughs> I really, really hate it. Mm, um, it's good for you. I'm yeah. one of those listeners who transformed from nothing to who i am today all because of you guys like i've implemented everything from diet to using novelty exercising using from crossfit to um, strength training um listening to good information and i love listening talk to you guys about your kids it's i sometimes when i'm listening to you guys at the gym i laugh in between while in sets and everyone's like I think she's gone mental. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I'm listening to this guy's uh, mind pump and my brother says, I think I'm on commission with you guys. <laughs> uh, so this is me saying thank you. Thank you. My question is not that complicated and I think so I know the answer. It's like, um, it's like a confirmation I need from you guys. So I've taken a job which requires me uh, about 90 minutes to commute one way. So it's about three hours minimum. Sometimes it goes into four hours. And then my hours are, I mean, I'm going to move closer to work, but it's in July and it's still three to four months. Um, and the work is eight to five, which is another nine hours. So I still train uh, five days a week, which I want to reduce to four because I'm getting tired. Um, but I don't, and I always hear you guys talk about steps like walk every day. And I use walk also to get out of the house because I still don't have a social life as in friends to go out with or um hang out with i think so you guys have become my friend i hang out with you guys all the time um with that i eat 1800 calories and i'm only 152 which is 411 i was about to say 41 411 not that small um and I weigh 50 kilos right now my body fat is 18 percent it was 14 percent at the comp um, I needed to bring it back to a normal place where I can work, be happy, uh, take care of my life and things that, you know, life admin. So I feel good uh, at 18%, no, 19%. Um, 
And with 1,800 calories, I get to eat enough. But without any walk, it takes away any active aspect of my life. I'm just training and then I'm sitting on my ass all day at work. So what do you guys recommend I should do so that I can stay in a good mental health space and also maintain this, like I'm in a steady place. I, I want to maintain it. And I do have programs for 18 weeks and I want to use uh, your MAPS Anabolic uh, going forward. Should you think should I, why I have 18 weeks is because I was planning to compete again in July before I turned 50. And I was like, it's too many things happening, not the right time to compete. Let's just give it up. But I still have the program. So what do you guys recommend? I'm, gl- I'm glad you made the decision to not compete with what you got going on. I think that that's too much with that kind of a drive, with that much of a, a shift in lifestyle right now. And it sounds like we only have, we, it's really just till July, right? July, you plan to move yeah. closer. Is that right? So if, yeah. And, and if you could handle this my recommendation would actually be to reduce the volume of training and replace it with walking. So if you okay. like, if you like going to the gym still four or five days a week, I wouldn't stop that. Yeah. That's healthy, yeah. but I would change. I, I would actually drop you all the way down to one or two days of maps anabolic. And then the other two okay. or three days walking and, you know, put us, uh, listen to mind pump or read, listen to a book or, do some listen to music, whatever you like to listen to, and, and Mind bump. yeah, and and get a nice walk in on, on the treadmill or low level uh, cardio on the elliptical. I think that would be a great way to get mo- or go outside if it's a beautiful day, even better, yeah. and go for a walk. But and you've heard us say this. I know you have if you listen to all the shows. Is that it's amazing how little a volume you have to do to maintain from what it was yeah. compared to get there. So you already have an amazing physique. You work so hard to get here. You don't need to do nearly as enough, enough as as much to maintain what you have, especially if you keep your diet in check and you see, you look mm-hmm. like you eat really well too. So if you're eating really well, you probably don't got to train. And this is a time where I would reduce the volume of training way down, especially with that kind of a commute. And I'd replace it with more I, walking. And stuff. I, I like the reduction in volume. I mean, you could even go, yeah. th- you could even do maps on a ball of three days a week. And and now here's okay. the other, here's the other aspect with activity. Forget the calorie burn sitting down yeah. uh, for eight hours straight. Even if you're active outside of that tends to not feel so good. So what I used to do mm. with clients of mine that work, because we're here in Silicon Valley. So like most of our clients did that. That's what they did. They would sit for 10 hours. I would have yeah. them every two hours. I would have them stand up and walk for mm. five minutes. So every hour or, or two, get up and do a five minute walk. And that turns into like 20 minutes of walking throughout the day. But, but you'll notice your productivity increases. You, you're, you're, mm. You feel better, uh, better energy, blood sugar control is better. So literally you just have a little alarm on your watch. And when it goes off, maybe 90 minutes, it goes off, get up, do five minute walk, maybe around the office, come back, sit down at your desk yeah. and get back to work. And then you don't have to worry about outside activity because you've already made up for it with those little mini walks uh, throughout yeah. the day. And But I wouldn't change your calories. Don't drop your calories. No. Because, no, no, no. no okay. okay. Not dropping yeah. calories. Yeah. Because yeah. you'll feel great. I think you'll feel great doing that. I, I love that advice. Ooh. Although I still think you should reduce volume. Three hour yeah. drive plus an uh, eight hour day of work. If you're lifting five a days a week, like maps and a ball three days a week, it would be perfect. Yeah. And then the other two okay. days you could do mobility, whatever. And then the little mini walks throughout the day. I think you'll, I think you'll feel amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I appreciate this. Because I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm very careful of using my words because, you know, what you tell yourself becomes reality. Yeah. I don't want to use addiction. It's I like going to the gym five days a week because it's kind of a routine. It's just same thing every day. Of but course. I do understand of keeping myself mobile more than just do that one hour and then just sit every uh, rest of the day. The, uh, the the other option you have that I would love to see you do, and if you don't have it, we'll give it to you. Do you own Maps 15 already? No. Okay, so I'm gonna have Doug send you Maps 15. That's a that's a six day a week program. That's the and do the advanced but, version, but it's only two exercises. So what I'd love to see yeah. you do is go to the gym, do those two movements, and then walk for the other thirty minutes. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. That would be mm-hmm. awesome. So that way you still have your routine because I don't like breaking a client who likes that. Like it, when you're yeah. in, that, I know what it's like to be in that routine and be in a good groove, and you like that that whole process. I don't like to disrupt that. And so I'm all for you still going to the gym five, six days a week. Just now yeah. drop it down to the two. So we'll literally follow MAPS 15 advanced yeah. 
And then yep. the you other spread it out. And then the other you. time you're in the gym, either go for a walk on the treadmill or do mobility or do something that's more working inward. Do something like that. That would yeah. be awesome. By the way, the, the comment you made about uh, running from things with exercise, if mm. you exercise and you did, and then you said sometimes you process with your workouts. If you put yourself in your body while you work out, if you're in your body, feeling your body while you work out, that helps the process. That actually helps yeah. processing. It's it's called it's somatic. When people yeah. run away with exercise, what they tend to do is avoid, they they're out of their body. They're just oh, they're just going, mm -hmm. and then they're not processing. They're running, but be in your body. Allow yourself to feel what you need to feel, even while at rest in between sets. That's a great way to process uh, difficult feelings. And one of my favorite ways to do that is kicking shoes off, getting barefoot, and doing mobility stuff. Oh, yeah. Where you're like yeah. you're moving your feet in the grass or the artificial turf if you're indoor. Yeah. Connect and, to all yeah, ranges of motion. Go, yeah, you're going yeah. slow. You're pausing in the movements yep. like that's a a great practice for working inward no i love bare feet and my gym doesn't have air con so <laughs> sometimes they don't have a choice but see me bare feet. it's too <laughs> hot here i'm gonna die <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's awesome, Rajni. Well, we're gonna send you that. We're gonna send you the the maps fifteen. I think that's a that's a great great program for you right now. Yeah. Thank you so much, hey guys. I really appreciate your advice. Um, and um. Uh, I don't have anything else to say, just to say thank you. Thank you. Are you in our forum? I want to see more of you. I am. Um, I'm not on social media. It's just I, one of those people who that stay off of it. Yeah. Oh. Don't let, don't let us encourage you to get it. on yeah. it. Stay off of it. Yeah, yeah you, you know what? That way healthier. <laughs> check back it. with us in a couple months. Yeah, check back with us in a couple yeah. months. Yeah, that's not how it's going yeah, for yeah. Sure. I'd love to hear how you're doing I once you make the move. Thank you. I will do that. Uh, but I have thought of it's the only problem with the social media is linked to your phone and then other people start sending you messages who wants to be friend and you're like, I really don't want to be friends with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I like um, you. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to encourage that. You can just you just email us every couple months. Okay. We'll, st we'll stay in touch. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Roger. Have a good one. Have a, have a great day. Thank you. You too. You too. She's lovely. I didn't yeah. recognize. Do you guys her. remember that? Well, yeah, no, I remember so, once Doug pulled the pictures up and showed her yeah. before. Not and after. just amazing transformation, what she went through well, and all the stuff that to she go through. That I mean, un amidst unbelievable. all that, and such yeah. a great attitude. I know, such a great, amazing attitude. attitude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and she looks phenomenal. I mean, yeah, she looks yeah. healthy. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, no, she does look really yeah. healthy. You know, you talked about going barefoot. I've been doing that lately more, even with my kids. Like when my three year old is just acting crazy, we take our shoes and socks off, walk on the grass. It brings everything down. Yeah, there's something to it, man, for sure. Our next caller is Maddie from Colorado. What's up, Maddie? How can we help you? Hey, hey how we doing, guys? What's going on? Brother? Right on. I just want to start by thanking you guys for the information you put out. and It's been a great help over the last couple of years. Right on. What you got for us, buddy? I'll just jump into my question if that's all right. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So a little background. I've been training since I was 14. I'm 20 now, about to turn 21. I've been consistent since the time I started but with consistency and diet and programming about three or four years freshman year of high school i was a skinnier kid about 150 pounds and i graduated around 220 with probably 16 17 percent body fat so it wasn't too crazy but i've done a few phases of cutting and bulking i'm currently bulking eating around 3500 calories a day eight to ten thousand steps and i'm back up to that 220 weight but i have a lot more muscle and strength than i had last time i was at this weight I'm relatively strong. I'm benching three plates, squatting four. And when I was deadlifting, I got up to 500. I haven't deadlifted in like a year and a half just because I've been lazy, honestly. But I've dropped 189 pounds and now I'm back up to 220, like I said. And my arms have stayed nearly the same size. They're lean and vascular. I don't really hold much fat on my arms, but I just have been having a hard time growing them. I've ran your guys' a split program and I started those, the push and pull days with, I started them with arms. So I was exerting most of my energy from the jump on arms, but I just want to see what you guys thought. That would be the first thing I would do consistently is, is, and you never say this typically to the average person or typical, but hit arms before you move uh, to your compound lifts that should work over time. Also, um, have you done any occlusion training? For your arms. Where you put like the occlusion band and you yep. restrict blood flow? Yep. Uh, no, I have not. Uh, that'll probably add a half an inch to your, a quarter inch to a half an inch in your arms within a couple months. Just practicing that. Yeah. And what you would do is 
at the end of your arm workout, just do like a couple sets of occlusion and it's gnarly. Do If you do it right, it's gnarly and it does tend to add muscle. I mean, I, I, I was able to see a good quarter inch on my calves from, from adding that. Yeah. I like, uh, yeah. I like maps anabolic protocol with trigger sessions focused around arms. So I, I okay. like, yeah. And, and then, and then also doing what you're doing, right? So following maps anabolic, starting with the arms, which is not normal. What we tell someone. So if your goal mainly to develop your arms, I'd be like, let's do maps anabolic. Let's start with arms always like you're doing. And then your trigger sessions on your off days, I want focused around arm pumps like that. And you could probably cycle in the occlusion training in there every once in a while. Just be careful of not overdoing it. No, I would you. do with maps anabolic. I would do occlusion once a week. Yeah. With all that. Once a week? Yep. 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 Now, would you recommend doing that on the back? Those yes. last two sets of arms? No. So if you start with arms, start with arms, do your workout. And then at the end, do uh, one of those days, do like three sets of occlusion for biceps and triceps. Okay. And yep. just stick stick to the reps that are in the program? That's yep. it. Yeah. And then and then do trigger sessions uh, th for uh, you know all, all three of them on the off days, make them arms. Right on, right on. Yeah. And, and you should get a good... I would say a good half an inch, uh, probably in 60 yeah. days or so. Yeah. By the way, a, 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 a 15 and a half, 16 inch arm yeah, you're, that's lean yeah. is mm -hmm. way more impressive than a fat 18 inch arm. You know, we get caught up with the inch, you know, inches of, the, of our arms type of deal. But when you're lean, you don't need huge arms to look, you know, muscle. And you, we just looked at your pictures. You look pretty balanced. Yeah. And you're strong as fuck. Thank you. A lot stronger than I was at that age. Yeah. So. You're you're ahead of the game, bro, for sure. You're already you're doing really Thank yeah. Yeah, you're doing really good. Yeah. And it's just if they're smaller muscles, they take a lot longer to Frequency see. Frequency and volume is really good. Yeah, help just you. it see it takes a long yeah. time to see a big yeah. difference on on arms because they are small muscles. It just takes consistency. And you've you've come a long way for how young you are already. So you're gonna be just fine, dude. Nah, I forgot he's twenty. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's twenty years. He's twenty years old, yeah, bro. You're good, yeah, you're you're doing good, man. You're, little, you're doing really good. good. Yeah. And is there I don't have anabolic, but is there deadlifting in there? Should I start doing that again? Yeah, deadlifts are in there. Adam yes. talks about development in the arms. Yes, I was just yeah. gonna. I was just gonna say the deadlifts are in there, and deadlifts are great for seeing arm growth. So it's like one of those side effects that you get uh, to the biceps that uh, not a lot of people think they're gonna get. We'll send it to you. So that that in itself is probably gonna help. I I love anabolic for you and focusing trigger sessions on the arms, and let's see what that does. Right on. Sounds good. Well, that was my only question. All right, Matt. Really cool to talk to you guys. Thanks a lot for the help. All right, Matty. Cool, Take it easy. I forgot how he was 20. Yeah, bro. <laughs> hey. Bro, 500 deadlift yeah, and 20 and three plates. Yeah, he'll get his arms. Fucker was over way, the next way few, stronger Over the next yeah. few years, he'll get his arms up to a good yeah. 17 inches, which yeah, is yeah. like really good. And, yeah. you know, to point out that de that was a side effect of deadlifting I, I, was, I didn't anticipate. It's that extended tension, that yes. lengthened bicep and range, tension. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's an isometric position for the bicep and forearms With that you just. Fucking 500 pounds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where else Loaded do you do that? Heavy as yeah. Fun. No, I, I, saw, I saw huge gains in my forearms and my biceps from that not anticipating that at all yeah what's the biggest you ever measure arms you ever measure them that's a good question i don't know what they were at the at the peak i don't know if i even you know, how funny is that i was into bodybuilding and yeah, i, well, I mean it doesn't matter yeah Nobody cares i know <laughs> I don't, and you know what i also yeah. realized too was that they were probably the biggest when i didn't like the way i looked like when mm -hmm. I was just big, bulky. Oh, uh, lean, yeah. lean. I was probably bigger. Two, yeah, I probably had 19 inch arms when I was 240. Yeah. But then I looked better with uh, 18 inch arms when I was yeah. lean. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, of course. you know, that, that's the thing too about like the. This is something we I, get stuck. We get people get caught I, up on the. Yeah, I remember this age though. At this age, I remember. Oh, of bro, course. I got 19. Yeah, I remember guys saying stuff like that and getting caught. But it's like you go through this enough, and then you realize like, oh wow, I got fixated. I got it. the most jacked arm compliments when I was when you're lean. When it's, I was and just smaller. Yes. I know. Yeah. Next caller is Marta from Minnesota. Hey, Marta. How can we help you? Hey, guys. I feel like I know you guys. <laughs> uh, you <laughs> do. Much you do. I hear yeah. you all the time. Yeah. How you but doing? Thanks so much uh, for everything you do. I'm great. Um, I'm really excited for this opportunity and uh, just want to thank you guys for everything you do. It's very much needed, especially with my background. Um, and I'll go into that too here quick. Um. I'm, I'm about 5'4", I'm about 175, and I've already lost about 100 pounds naturally. Wow. awesome. Um, I, yeah, thanks. I, I lost it doing low carb as I was type 2 diabetic, uh, diagnosed with that back in 2019, and I have since reversed that um, with a combination of weight training and cardio. Hell yeah, that's great. Um, I yeah, uh, I completed my first triathlon last year, 
and I'm now looking to compete in a physique competition. This is completely out of my comfort zone. <laughs> um, I listened. I have been listening to you guys for a while, and I ran MAPS Anabolic twice last year. I was always doing more circuit type training. Did that, and that's when I saw the most change. Was not doing so much. Um, I was consistently tracking my macros, keeping carbs between 50 and 100 grams, as I was a bit nervous with the type 2 diabetes being in remission. Um, fats are generally around 70 grams. Protein was always high. And calories were around 17 to 1,800. Um, I've been at it that for a while and stuck with that for about a year and a half, and I didn't see much movement on the scale. I didn't want to cut more calories because I hear you guys, and that's pretty low already. Um, I know the scale doesn't matter as much, but with about 30% body fat, I still have a lot of work to do. And I had been so stuck and thinking that I need to just jack up the calories a bit as 1,800 is not enough to really cut from. Um, but I was nervous about that too, of course. Uh, since I've eliminated cardio, um, maybe taking walks here and there, and I purchased MAPS Anabolic Advanced back in December, and I'm now going into phase three and see significant changes. Um, I know you'd be happy to hear I have I've just heard more of the content and put my faith in and fear aside and just trusted the process, as you guys say all the time, and went from 1800 to 2300 calories while doing anabolic advance. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So protein is between 150, 200 carbs went up at about 170 and fat are always between 70 and 100. Um, I'm currently in the deload week and I'm now going into phase three and I feel great. I'm stronger. My hormones are really balanced. I feel in great health and shape right now. Um, at this point, I'm looking for how to get leaner from where I am. This would be a big change for me. Um, I'm, be I'm between the same three to five pounds during this process, which is great because I feel strong and I I'm getting good sleep and everything you guys reference. I feel great. Um, I'm just not sure how to start cutting. Uh, I really need to build my legs because the triathlon training and running and all that really messed those up uh, with all the cardio I did. And uh, I just want to get into competition physique. And I'm not sure where to go at this point, being in the place I was extreme, overweight, disease and everything else to now. Um, I was looking at MAPS aesthetic but then heard that I should do performance first. And now, but I'm looking for the hard sculpted physique now. And this is my first time doing it. I'm nervous. I'm scared. And I'm just kind of looking at you guys for a little advice, you know, being yeah, that I was in a Mart more extreme and now I'm going to the other. So Mart Marta, you're, you're doing great. Um, Amazing. You've, you have continued to make better and better and better choices along this entire journey. I think you, you've come full circle as far as like where I'd want you to be. So where you're at right now, mindset, the way you're training right now, the way you're eating right now is where we need to be. We can interrupt the current like calorie intake with mini cuts, but I act, you're nowhere near right now where I want you to be if you were a client and you said you wanted to compete at one point. I don't want you, I don't want, and the reason why, and I'm sure you've heard me say this, that the, the real work is done in the off season, not in the cut for the show. Well, all, all the hard work is in building the muscle, building the metabolism to get us ready to cut for a show. And your your intuition was right. Being at 18, even being 2,300 calories, it's just too low of calories to say, hey, let's do a show in November and let's start getting ready for it right now. Bad idea. Right now, you want to continue doing what you've kind of done right now, which is, and by the way, to have cut out cardio, to have increased to 2,300 calories and did not have put on any body fat and to be getting stronger, you have done a ton in that short period of time. I just want you to keep doing that. I want us to keep going in that direction. And again, if you want to see a little bit of movement on the, on the scale down or whatever, okay, I might let you go, okay, we're going to do a cut for three weeks. So we reduce calories back down to 1,800 for three weeks. And then I want to go back up. Now, this time when we go up, we're going to go up to 2,400 calories. And I'm going to keep you at 2,400 calories for a while until you start to talk to me like this again. And I'm going to go, okay, let's go cut for about two or three weeks again so you can feel it and see that. And then, okay, now let's go up to 2,500 calories. And I'm going to keep playing that game with you until we are at a place where your, your metabolism is roaring. You're eating so much food. You're looking back at me going, Adam, I can't even eat all this food. And you feel strong and the scale hasn't gone up at all during this whole process. That's where we want to be well in that place for a while before we even say, okay, here's a date for when I want to get ready to try and Mar Marta, compete. what, what do you, what's the, 
what are you looking to accomplish by doing this competition? Is it because you like to train for a target or a goal? Is, is it uh, that you like to work towards something? I've always admired the muscular physique. Um, I, I mean, as far back as I can remember, just the work that goes into it is something I was never capable of doing. My mind wasn't in it, you know, being a hundred pounds overweight and you're doing and it. Yeah. You're doing, you're doing it right and now, Marta. It's, yeah. You're doing it. Listen, what, you're what, doing it's just it. such a challenge for me. No, you're comp- doing it right now. Competing won't do that for you. No. If you get in a competition right now, it's going to send you in the opposite you, direction. You're doing it already right now. Yeah. You are doing exactly what you, if you hired me to get you ready to compete and I had no time, you just said, Adam, you're, we're building towards this long-term goal to compete one day. This is the process, what you're doing. What you're doing right now is the process to do that. This is the hard work. You are building muscle. You're building a like you're kicking ass right if now. If you jump too fast, if you jump the gun yep. too fast, you're gonna backfire. You're, you're gonna backfire. Everything's gonna go backwards, and you're gonna send your body in too much stress. Potentially, uh, could cause more issues with your blood sugar. Believe it or not, because of the the the, the low calorie, the training, the stress can actually cause metabolic issues as well. I wouldn't compete right now. I'd do what Adam said. And if you want to compete, if you're really interested in some kind of a competition, what's probably going to give you better results, uh, in even even in terms of getting a hard physique, would be a powerlifting competition, not a competition where you get on stage and you extreme diet. I would rather see you do powerlifting than physique. And if you still want to do physique, I would do what Adam said and just slowly, you're you're moving in such a good direction. Trying to compete now would you would throw a wrench in the whole thing, right? And I debated that, you know, because I'm just getting started with everything. But it's just something that, you know, it's a challenge for me. Um, I see it as a good thing, you know, that I'm able to put in the work to do yeah. that and and show myself, you know. You um, are, well, you, you know what's I happening. Just, I, also, just, I just saw your. We just saw your before and afters and what your progress picks right now. Like you're you're fucking killing it. Yeah, you know what like what's you're, happening you're right now is right you're now. you're you feel so good. Yeah. You're on fire. You've you've already tackled the biggest uh, hurdles, which is losing 100 pounds and beating type two diabetes. Not a lot of people can do that or say that they've done that. So you feel so good. You're like, all right, I'm ready for yeah, the what's next. next? <laughs> yeah, and 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 what you don't want to do is jump the gun and throw a wrench in, into the whole machine. Keep moving in this direction, and you're you're crushing and and just bask in this amazing feeling that you have right now, where you feel balanced and strong and rested, uh, and healthy. You don't need to push your body beyond what you're doing now. It's not going to get you there faster. It'll actually slow things down and maybe even cause a reversal. And like I said, if you want that competition, cause I know you did a triathlon before it's, you know, this to me, I had clients like this where they like to have a target. Uh, you'd be much better served doing a powerlifting competition than you would a stage presentation competition. So if you need to sign up for something, find a local powerlifting competition, I'll send you Maps Powerlift, and you can follow Maps Powerlift. By the way, through that process of following Maps Powerlift with a slow reverse diet, mm-hmm. you're going to build more muscle and get better shape than yep. if you were to Your start. Metabolism is going to go crazy. Yes, yeah. than you would if you were going to enter into a physique competition. Another good goal for us to have, if you want goals, is the goal is to get to 2,800 calories without putting weight on the scale. And the way you do that is by doing what you're doing right now. And then every once in a while, interrupt it with a small cut. Yep. Never longer than two or three weeks. Okay. So never longer than two or three weeks do I want you to cut back down to 1,800 calories or so and then come back out of it. Every time you come back out of it, try and come at a little bit higher calorie than what you were before and play that game. Just keep doing that until you can get to a point where you're like, I can eat 2,800 calories and I'm maintaining this weight. That's amazing. That means that we had built a bunch of muscle in that process that has now sped your metabolism up, that your body needs that many calories just to sustain. That is a massive win. That's incredible. Win. That is a massive win. And yeah, that's you a were great eight, goal. You were at 1,800 calories. What were you eating? What were your calories when you were losing the 100 pounds? What did you bring them down to? It was, I mean, I didn't really count. I kind of just got aggressive and eliminated a lot of the crap I was eating, you know, processed yeah. food, uh, nasty carbohydrates, pastas, things like that. And just kind of, I didn't really dial it in until I started training for the triathlon and, well, I need to have, you know, more weight to lose and everything else. And it wasn't until I actually started listening to you guys that I'm like, wait a minute, I want muscle. I need to lift more weights. And I'm not an idiot in the gym. You know, I, I've lifted here and there, but nothing like I'm doing now um and you know just i was just afraid of gaining the weight of course you know even i even though i was eating healthy but there was nothing happening and so then i heard you guys you know 
slowly reverse. I'm like, oh man, you know, like, all right, you know, finally I just, I pulled the trigger and I'm like, I'm just going to do it. I mean, what, what, what's the worst that can happen? You know, I just go back and it's been working beautifully. So thank you. It works. Um, it works for that, that advice. It really does work. It's insane. <laughs> How would you feel about following maps powerlift as a workout? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try. I mean, I, I do have some shoulder issues that have slowly been going away with some of the um, working out I've been doing with anabolic and the mobility uh, and anabolic advance. Um, so that's helpful. But yeah, I mean, that sounds great. All right, then I'll say, open. do you have maps uh, uh, prime pro? I, I, yeah. Uh, wait, no, I, I don't. I have, okay. uh, what is that a program? <laughs> Yes. One of the programs. Yeah. So I'll send you, yeah, I'm going to send so I don't you, have that. I'm going to send you both power lift and prime pro use the mobility movements and prime pro for your shoulder and follow maps power lift I, I, and, and continue on this process. You, it's going to be amazing. All right. Well, are you in, Thank are, you guys. Are, I appreciate your time. Are yeah. you in our forum? I'm not. Okay. No. That, I want you in our forum more than anything else. That's I want you in there. And I just want you to check back with me once a month, check in with me once a month and let me know where, where we're at calories, how you're feeling, where your mind's at. I'll keep you on the right track. Awesome. All right. All right. Sounds great. All Thanks right. guys. Yeah. I right. appreciate your work and appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. I love hearing that. She's doing so good. I love hearing that. So Reverse her type two. So, bro. Yeah, so enough. good. I mean, incredible. Yeah, I mean, she's made a massive transformation already. And she's cut out the cardio, increased the calories, reversed diabetes. I mean, fuck, are you kidding yeah. me right now? The, the, the worst thing she could do. Oh, yeah. Uh, no way. If she was my irony. client, I would never let her do no. that right now. Never, never, That'll never, throw never. everything backwards. No, no, no. No way. No, no, no. We're not ready. We're not you know, ready for that. It takes the, a bit of the wind out of the sails, but that's the right advice. Yeah. No, she needed, she needed to hear that. I mean, yeah. there was something that drove her to triathlons, which was a bad decision back also, then. Also. Yeah. Right, right, right. Right. So, and, but I love that she put piece that together and got rid of that and yep. look at the wins that she's having right now. She's now, whatever was in in her head that made her think the triathlon isn't the, the same thing for physique for physique yeah. same mm -hmm. thing it's mm -hmm. like just a different modality but it's like totally. the same like you don't need to do that right now you're doing the right thing stay exactly. the course look are you a hard gainer check out our free hard gainer guide mindpumpfree.com also find us on instagram justin is at mindpumpjustin i'm at mindpumpdestefano adam is at mindpumpadam 